Hello guys, winter's here. Time to hack. Ah! I have returned. A bit late, but I have some interesting content for you. Today we will code an auto be op hack for Counter Strike 2. This hack will let you hit crazy bunny hops, and the only thing you need to care about is strafing. I know you guys want CS2 content, and now it, it's here. If you want to join the C-Sharp learning community, then make sure to subscribe, like, and write a comment. Perhaps an idea that you want me to pursue. You can join the Discord as well. But remember, all tutorials from this channel are performed with multiplayer disabled, and you should follow. These videos and source code are not meant to be exploited for unfair advantages. Thank you, enjoy. Welcome to today's showcase. Let's get right into it. And uh, here is the code. Let's uh, scroll it out a bit. You can see that it's not really that much. It's a couple of lines and most of it is comments. So I have CS2 and we will run it under the properties in the launch options with dash in secure mode. This will disable VAC and we can't play with the normal matchmaking. We will have VAC disabled and we can't ruin other people's experience. So let's run it. Okay, we can start the application. And it doesn't say anything. Go inside of the game and now just hold space. He will keep on jumping. Wait, I need a weapon. So, now we can just hold space and he will bunny hop. It's not perfect, it misses a few jumps here and there. But, it does the job. You just have to strafe at this point. That's a pretty sick line. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at the offsets and the values that we will use within the code. So let's go into Steam, go under the game Counter Strike 2, right click, set the properties to dash insecure. This is very important. Just add dash insecure to the launch options because this will disable VAC and it will not let us play with anyone else that doesn't have VAC disabled. So we don't have to ruin other people's experience when using our hacks or coding them. So add this launch option, very important. When you have added that, we can click on the play button. So when the game has loaded, we can click on the play on casual mode, click whatever map, then click on go, and you should get this message telling us you have launched the game in insecure mode from outside Steam or with insecure flag. Your game files signatures will not be validated. So we can't join VAC secured servers and we can't get banned. So we will go inside of the practice tab and start up a game with infinite ammo and infinite warm up on the dust 2 map. So, inside of the game, it doesn't really matter which side you pick. I'll choose the T side, and uh, we want to create this bunny hop, and we will use the F flag of our character and the force jump. So, we will check the state if we're in the air, or if we're grounded, standing, or crouching, and if we're grounded, and we hold our hotkey, it will make a jump. And then when we, when we land, it will perform another jump. So let's open Sheet Engine and test this out. Alright, so I have Sheet Engine open with my table. Don't worry, this is just for visuals. Uh, I would never have opened Sheet Engine without dash insecure mode and you should do the same. 
because otherwise you will be getting banned right now. So the offsets we will get from the CS2 dumper by Can I zoom out please? There we go. So the link should be in the description, but we will use the A2X CS2 dumper by A2X, I assume his name is. And we will go into the generated folder, go under the, or you can just control F and search for offsets.cs. We will open this file and here we can see two of the addresses that we want. So the first one will be the force jump. That's this address that will be combined with the client.dll just like the dumper says. So this value will be, I think it is a uint unsigned integer, which has the value 256 when we haven't made a jump and when we do decide to make a jump, if we write plus jump, it will change to this value, 65537. And uh, when we go back, it will change back to 256. So to perform a jump from outside CS2 without the console, we will just change this to 65537, and he will jump inside of the game without us pressing a key. So let's also set it back to 256 to perform a minus jump. Then we could make a jump again. You can see Chitanya shows us that, that value as well. Now, when we know how to make a jump, we will take a look at the player F flag. So the player F flag will be the DV local player pawn. I don't really understand if or no, if the controller is any better. You guys can tell me in the comments what I'm doing wrong. Uh, but we will use the local player pawn. So we add that, and we have an extra offset, which is or which will be client.dll. We will go into the client.dll, and inside of the client.dll, we will search for f flag not the first one but the second one under the cbase entity which is the state in which the player is so if he is in the air let's say if he's jumping if he's crouching and so on it will display a value for that so when we're standing it's six five six six five when we're jumping it is 64 on the end for crouching it's 67 and so on so we will check these and just perform jumps if the value is 65 or 67 when we're crouching so let's get into the coding we will start by creating a new console project this console project will be the dotnet 8 version and let's call it up with with asobio the next step will be to install the memory package or the memory class SWED64. You can find it within the NuGet package manager by browsing and searching SWED64. But before we can continue, we will go to the project properties and set the build to the 64 bit architecture. Now that we're ready to begin coding, we will add the using of SWED64, but also using system.runtime.interruptServices. Then we will initialize the SWED class with the CS2 as the process that we want to handle. After that, we will create some constants that will hold the values of the hotkey, which is the spacebar. We will also hold the values from the standing and crouching position. We will store the values for the plus jump and minus jump. And that's it. This will make it easier to understand what is going on. 
After that, we have some static offsets or memory addresses that we want to declare. The first one will be the client module. This is because the memory offsets that we will want to use all are relative to the client.dll. So we will get the client module base by using the sweat method get module base, then the name of the module, which is client.dll. After that, we will declare um, another int pointer, force jump address. This will hold the address for, you guessed it, the force jump. This will be the sum of the client module and the dv force jump. Now, we will create the main bop loop now, but because I forgot, we will have to add the import of, of get async key state. This will make it possible to check if our spacebar is down and thereby perform the auto bop. Now, inside of our bhop loop, we will check if the get async key state of our spacebar is less than zero, which means if we're holding the spacebar down and thereby perform some jumps. But we also want to check the state of our player if he is grounded or not before that. So we will create another address, an int pointer, which is called the player pawn address. We will get this address from reading from the client module and the dv local player pawn. We could use the controller here. I don't know which one is the best. You guys can tell me in the comments if you know. Then we will use the f flag offset, which can be found in the client.dll.cs and get the current state of the player. And if the spacebar is down, we will check if the F flag equals to the standing or crouching value. And if so, we will perform a jump. We will add out fred.sleep because it seemed like it didn't let me jump when I said it without a sleep statement. Then we will write a uint with the force jump address and our plus jump. Now, if we're not in the air, we will reset the jump by using the same bright uint, but with the value minus jump. This will reset the jump and hopefully jump again one, once we land. Okay, so let's try it out. I have open Counter-Strike 2 in dash insecure like we did in the tutorial. So let's run our project here. Let's click on play and hope that it works. So if we hold space now, it should jump and perform a jump exactly when we land so it clearly does and all we need to do is to strafe so it's not perfect it's something at least you can make some hops fails sometimes but it does the job so 